What's up guys, Shane here for 3D Printing. Happy 2018, and here I have the January Maker Box to start it off right. Welcome back guys. So it is 2018, we have a whole new year of MakerBox ahead of us, so let's dive into this one. If you're unfamiliar with the MakerBox, this is a monthly subscription that comes out, and they have four filament samples if you order monthly, or they have eight filament samples if you order bi-monthly, which saves a lot for the international people out there, less shipping. I guess in the States too, you would save as well uh, if you don't want it as often. I enjoy getting these monthly so that I can test them out, see what new filaments are out there, and also hone in my own skills when it comes to testing out new filaments. Let's dive into this one and see what comes in the box. All right, so we're at the top. We have a verbatim sticker, and I don't know what verbatim doesn't make now. I still have a roll, I think, of CDs from probably 2005 verbatim CDs. I mean, they make all kinds of crazy stuff, which is pretty funny. Uh, we have a MakerBox sticker, so those are always appreciated. This is a new one. A lot of the other ones were the square, black square ones, but this is a nice new one. Uh, Earth 2018, so ERRF, the East Coast Rep Rap Festival. This is the first annual one that they are going to do. I am super excited for this. Uh, Lauren over at ABuzz Designs is doing a lot of work towards this. I think she and her husband are actually the ones that set it all up for where it's at. It was just revealed recently, well, when you guys see this, we a while ago now. Anyway, it's just revealed that's going to be in Maryland. It's going to be June 22nd and 23rd, and they're asking for support. So I'll put a link down to their sites and everything they have. So go check out Earth, and if you can make it, make sure you guys get there. And we have, oh, some Starburst this time. Normally they give you the little Harbio jelly uh, bears, which I think my kids ate all the last ones, or maybe I did, I don't know. And here we have the little card. So a couple things on here, uh, there's discount codes. So there's a little password on here. You go on to extremeknowledge.com forward slash codes, enter this in, and it gives you the discount code for these four filaments at Printed Solid or through the actual MakerBox site, uh, since Printed Solid is the big uh, helper in this now. How you get free Maker Boxes? We'll talk about my affiliate program here later, which is what they use. If you need some print ideas, join the community on their Facebook page. And well, it's the same front and back. Just a little bit, yeah, basically the same thing front and back. And down at the bottom here, we have a big verbatim PP filament uh, card. Yeah, just a little card here to tell about their filament, some things about it, the custom spool, it's a tight tolerance, made in Japan. Food packaging, medical applications, IT equipment, what it's used for, high heat resistance, high chemical resistance, resin, pliable, post-processing. So interesting stuff. I wonder if that's, well, I guess their PP is what came in here. But again, I will find out once we dig in. All right, up first, Advanced Matte PLA by Matte Force. And this is in a nice like slate gray, like a darker gray. The print settings. Hot end temperature 180 to 220, so normal PLA settings. Bed temperature, room to 60C, we got normal. Speed 40 to 120, normal there. Info, a premium quality PLA with a matte finish for higher quality visual prints. So I use the matte filament from Protopasta. I was not a fan of it. I had a hard time printing with it. I think maybe if I went back now with the skills that I have, you know, now probably a year later since I've used it, I might be able to get it print better. But this, um, again, so matte, Filament is pretty cool stuff. Again, I just couldn't get it to work with another brand. We'll see how this one from Matt Forge works out. Yep, so we got polypropethene by Verbatim. I hope I said that, polypropethene. And so they're calling it Verbatim PP filament. And it is a clear, semi-clear filament. Yeah, let's say semi-clear. It's a little bit hazy in there. So it is what that is. Anyways, the print setting is 210 to 230 C on the hot end. Bed temperature 100 C. Speed 30 to 55 meters a second. Okay, info, a soft and chemically resistant polymer, sticks well to PET tape, print supported like a flexible filament. Oh, it actually is, yeah, now that I actually bend it. It actually is rather rather flexible, so we'll see how this one, I, don't, I can't even guess how this is gonna turn out. I'm kind of hoping that it actually is a flexible filament afterwards, uh, but anyways, we will find out. Yeah, very interesting. Verbatim, of all people making filament, verbatim. All right, so Push Plastics ASA in a, looks to be like a gunmetal gray here. Uh, the print settings, 230, 240C on the hot end. Bed temperature, 80 to 110C. Speed, 30 to 90 millimeter second. Info, a functional material with similar properties to ABS. Includes UV inhibitors, so that perfect print for prints that will be used outside. UV inhibitors, so it will be perfect for prints that will be used outside. There we go. 
Print similar to ABS, but with a little less warp. So I had ASA a long time ago. I don't know if it's pushed plastics, but I didn't really know how to print with it. And that was also before my FT5 was enclosed. So because this is similar to ABS filament, you're gonna to wanna to enclose this when you print. If you have a I3 printer that's not enclosed, throw a box over it, a plastic bag. Uh, people, some don't recommend boxes because it's more flammable if you had a problem, but something to enclose it. I have tried throwing literally a blanket on the FT5 because it's a great big frame and everything's far away from the blanket. But I just threw like a, a one of my actually backdrops over it to try and keep the heat in. But anyway, so you're gonna need a heated bed, a high temp heated bed, so 80 to 110, and you're gonna need an enclosed printer to make this work out either way. All right, and here we have Styx STYX-12 from Form Future. Now, Form Future sends their filament samples over to MakerBox just like this. I believe this is the same that they sell the filament samples on their website, it's my assumption, but they send it prepackaged either way. I personally don't like it. I like the little baggies that all of the MakerBox filament comes in because it makes a great way for me to organize everything in my box down here that has all of the prints or all the different filaments from the past year and a half that I've been doing these boxes. Either way, it's a white filament, looks like. Let's see what it is. The hot end temperature, 240 to 270, really hot. Bed temperature, 80 to 120C, really hot. Speed, 30 to 60 meters a second, so average. Info, Stix 12 is an industrial PA12 grade nylon filament, which combines excellent mechanical, chemical, and histographic properties with printability. Wow, histogroscopic, histogroscopic, sorry. Yeah, those are, I am not a science person and big sciencey words are not my thing. Uh, and also, so that's the MakerBox, they put their sticker on there, but here on the back, Form Future also has their sticker, which tells you it's white, 240270 and the batch number, and it is 50 grams worth of filament. So, that is interesting. So again, with, so with this one, you're gonna need an all metal hot end. So your throat cannot be PTFE lined with this filament. There's a lot of debate. We know that the PTFE tubing breaks down at around 250 degrees centigrade and the higher you go, the faster it breaks down and starts to melt. Melting point is right around 255-ish. There are some people out there that say PTFE lining starts to break down at 235 centigrade. Do your own research and check out what you think is possible, but do not print this with a PTFE lined extruder. Just don't do it, or is it with a hot end, not extruder. You're going to melt your PTFE liner unless you're printing this on the low end at 240, but if you're gonna print on the high end at 270, it will melt, you will get a clog, you will ruin the throat, you will need to replace it. There's no questions about that. So be mindful of the ASA enclosed printer, no fan, sticks printer, all metal hot end, no PTF liner in your throat. All right, so there's all the filament. Let's get these on a couple of the printers and see how they turn out. All right, well, I would like to say that this went without a hitch, but it didn't. There is a few things that I had said earlier, like about matte filament, I had issues with it last time, I had issues with it again. Some of it might have been my fault, some of it I think is just the filament is a little bit more difficult to print with, and this is very different than the matte finish that we got, that I had previously from Protopasta. So there is that. The Form Future filament, again, I had issues with that. Uh, if you were on my live stream, when I was actually printing this a week or two ago, you would have seen it actually be printing, and we talked about it a little bit there. But the ASA worked out well and the polypropylene worked out well. So let's take a closer look and actually see the details of these, how they printed out. They were all printed on my Folger Tech FT5 for a little bit more consistent results. But either way, let's take a look. Okay, so up first is the ASA from Push Plastic. Now I didn't print the ASA previously because my FT5 wasn't enclosed, that was over a year ago. But now that it is, we come out with this. And looking at it, I think it's a little over extruded. Uh, just how it looks here, I think maybe like 0 0.02 less would have been good, especially like down in here, you can really see the, the grooves in there. It's a 0.2 millimeter layer height. I'm not sure about that, but the sides came out pretty good. Um, again, a little over extruded, I think, hence why I make a little bit of rippling in there. And then underneath over supports, not horrible, but not great. Uh, I mean, most of the cogs came out well. These ones down here, 
had quite a bit of warping and slipping on there. Uh, over the actual supports was good. Uh, this one, not quite as clean coming out of there. I need to get my exact knife, pull that out. But the first layer was also very nice. The texture of this is weird. Uh, it really is. Like it looks like a matte finish and it looks really light in like the video. It's a little darker in real life. Uh, and it just feels odd. And I'm, I'm wondering if that's just the over extrusion. Like clearly here, this is over extruded on there. So I would need to fix that up a little bit. But otherwise, printing this in the enclosure, it worked first time around. It came right off of some glue stick. So it worked out well for a one-time print. Uh, it would be interesting though to actually get a roll of ASA and actually finally do some like real testing on this stuff and not just off of a sample uh, spool. Okay, the advanced matte fiber. Okay, so the advanced matte PLA from Matte Forge. Again, I had my, you know, I was a little worried about this because I had issues with the protopasta matte finish, but either way we went through with it. I have two of them here because this one, like I was way too close to the bed for this filament on a piece of Folgertec build tech. Now the new Folgertec build tech, I'm not as big a fan of as their old stuff, but I could not get this sucker off. And clearly, as I was trying to get some of it off, a bunch just stayed on the bed. But other than that, the sidewalls uh, honestly almost look like, like clay. It's just how, how smooth it actually came out to be. And then on top, not too bad. Uh, I actually think this might have been a little under extruded versus the over extruded ASA because looking in here you do see there are some gaps in some of the layers here. And the actual very top layer here you see a little bit of zits in there. So I think if I would up this by like maybe 0.01% so if it's like 0 0.90, 0 0.91 this would have came out a little bit better I think. So again I had the issues there. So we reprinted it and I raised my layer height up. And as you can see, there is gaps here between my first layer, but this was super easy to get off. I mean, it still took a minute, but it was much easier to get off. I think that you really need to pay attention to the build surface you use with this stuff. Uh, maybe throw down a, uh, some glue just to give yourself a little bit of a uh, separator between the actual build surface and your filament. But as uh, see the uh, support comes off very easily. No issues with that at all. I didn't pull off any of this really. And I love the Simplify 3D filament because, or the support because it comes right off. Now, here, there's definitely a cooling problem with this. And I did this with max cooling and normal filament comes out great. This stuff, I mean, look how choppy that is. Not so much. So I'm thinking if you're doing printing this stuff with extreme overhangs, this probably is not the filament for you. But either way, again, it came out interesting. It kind of has like that clay look to it. Uh, very smooth. Uh, it is a very matte color where the actual protopasta had a matte finish, like the actual texture to it. This is just the matte finish. So a very, you know, dull look to it, I will say. But either way, interesting. You know, again, uh, only printing off a small sample of it, you can only do so much. So hopefully one day I can try more of this. All right, Styx 12 from Form Futura. Form Futura and I are not friends because I have yet to have filament that prints well from that company. That is just me personally. Other people swear by them. I personally do not. So the very first one I printed without an enclosure because this is a type of nylon. So nylon doesn't need an enclosure. And I looked online on their website, does not say anything about needing an enclosure either there. So I printed it. Well, it split quite a bit actually without the enclosure. Uh, and this was at the normal 15% infill. Uh, I think it was a little over extruded. It's really hard to tell because it's white and white doesn't show up on camera very well. Uh, but the first layer was a little close also on this one. So either way, this is what I had printing during the live stream. And I was like, well, that was just crap. So let's enclose the printer. I lowered it down to 10% infill just so I had enough filament to actually do a full another one because I didn't think I had enough to do another 15%. So I downed that. Everything else remained the same, four top, four bottom, two perimeters. And I actually had worse splitting in a uh, enclosed environment. Now, when I did first start printing this, I will say that it was popping like crazy. So I took it out, threw it in the oven for three hours at 250 degrees, that's as low as my oven goes, and it printed without any popping, so I figured it was going to be good, but no. And this was printed directly after this one, so it's as dry as I can keep it. And granted, I'm in a place that is low humidity, but the front layer, like the bottom layer, was better. 
So yeah, the underside of this came out okay, or the sport was okay, it's just the, the splitting on this filament is just, I don't know, maybe it wasn't dry enough after a few hours in the oven, but I don't know. I, I just did not like it, and we'll talk more about it a little bit later. All right, and finally, we have polypropylene by Verbatim. So again, Verbatim is well known for making media types for computers and things like that, and now they're making 3D filament. It, it has a slight flex to it, I would consider this a you know very rigid semi-flex filament, but it actually came out really nice. The the extrusions for the walls super duper smooth. I was very surprised by that. I mean, with cooling, it worked out really well. I printed this at uh, 40 millimeters a second, which is right in the middle of what they wanted. You know, no time at all. We had it over support. It's gonna. It's hard to tell, but it did come out well there. And on the overhangs here, some of them came out better than others. This one is the roughest. You can kind of see right there how it's. Those ones are kind of turned, but then as you get around the other side, they are completely nice and rounded as how they should be. So this was a cool filament. Uh, clear, not so much. I'm not a fan of that, but depending on what your application is. Uh, they, it really printed well, so I was very impressed with this one. So as I said, um, if you're a fan of Form Future filament, great. If it prints well for you, great. I have tried Form Future filament several different times now. It all prints like just trash. So I'm not really happy with anything that that company has to offer at all. The matte PLA came out okay, again with additional testing and me actually verifying settings on the first layer. It could be a much better filament, at least print better, also depending on the maybe I build service. Maybe I just need to use a PI instead of more of a build tack type of layer or of a build surface and that we get better results. Could be. Again, it's, it's hard to know what to print these on. It really is because you're kind of playing a guessing game when you first do these prints and you only have a little bit to print with. So it is what it is on that. ASA came out well, a little, uh, this one was uh, over extruded, that's fine. The polypropylene, really cool stuff. Again, clear, not really my style, but uh, not bad. Okay, so that wraps it up for the MakerBox. It was a interesting set. I had good and bad, but hopefully this will help you guys figure out what settings you need to use in order to actually print these out. Now, if you wanna get a MakerBox, there'll be a link down below and a coupon code for 15% off your first month's box. That is more than you can get off of the website, which is really nice to know, at least for your first month. And for every three people that subscribe using my link down below, I end up getting a free box. So it really helps out the channel. It's one less thing I need to pay for, but even if I don't get three people, I still buy it every month. They just end up refunding me, that's how it works. So if you wanna check it out and do any of these kind of prints or become a subscriber, check out the link down below and check out their website. So I hope this video helps you guys out on how to figure out how to print with these filaments and I hope the other ones that I've done have helped you out. Otherwise, I am working on a website with Riley on it's gonna store all my settings for all the different filaments I have as well with a picture and maybe even simplify 3D profiles if I end up going that route I'm not sure yet because that is a ton of work on my time because I have over 200 filaments that I would need to actually enter in there and make some of my three profiles for, export them all. So I'm not sure that I'll actually go that route, but hopefully a picture and the settings at least for all these filaments, you will be able to have access to that. So thank you guys for watching. Again, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If it didn't, thumbs down. Talk me in the comments down below, two or four, I'd love to hear from you. If you wanna know what's going on on my channel, hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna know what's going on immediately, hit the bell icon, that way you get email notification and some new content. And if you wanna help me out financially, there's loads of ways to do that down below. There's a Patreon link, you wanna to donate to me monthly. There's Streamlabs and buy me a coffee if you wanna do a one-time deal. Or if you just wanna update your bookmarks and do your shopping for the different various vendors that I use, down below there's lots of those links as well. And if you use the MakerBox links, again, I end up getting a free box after so many people subscribe. I thank you guys for watching, and until next time, happy printing.